There have been a number of nice improvements to the HIK rigging and animation system in my 2013, beginning with the actual behavior of the rig. So here I have my Sven character already rigged and set up. And what you can see here is that we now have a syncing that happens between FK and IK. So if you were to rotate the FK, the IK will follow. If you rotate, or rather move, the IK effectors, then the FK will follow. These used to be out of sync until you actually release the mouse. Now they say in sync at all times so that you can get a kind of better visual feel for how your character is moving. Another very nice improvement is the ability to customize the user interface for your character controls. So for starters, we've actually unified the definition and the control tabs into a single UI. We also have um, expose the character target and character source controls at a higher level so they're easier to access. But beyond that, in terms of interacting with your character, using the selection controls here that allow you to indirectly drive the selection of your character, you can actually customize this look. So I'm going to bring down the uh, customization settings here. And first thing you'll see is that we now have um, a much smaller kind of uh, screen real estate for the default character control. Now, this is a new A stance, but you can also load custom UIs that allow you to set uh, different looks. For instance, we have two default or built-in looks. One is the A stance, and another is the T stance. The nice thing about the T stance is that it's scalable so that I can get a really close-in look if I need it, or I can make it more compact if necessary. Now, we also have the ability to load other custom looks. For instance, I've created two for Sven. I've got one with the A control, or the A layout, and I've got one for the T stance. Again, this one is scalable, but they both have the exact same selection controls so that I can go in and I can select various body parts, and I can also do all my various pinning um, as well as reach settings in here. So this uh, is a nice new way of kind of visualizing your characters uh, from, a, from a, a user interface standpoint. You can take this a lot farther I've got a couple of examples here showing, for instance, a Superman character where the, th the hand controls have actually been exposed at a higher level. And you'll notice his stance is slightly different as well. Just to show you another example, let's go in and bring up a Gremlin character. And you can see that the layout of the controls is very different from this character. So we provide XML templates that basically allow you to, or help you get started with, uh, with these layouts. So you can see that each one of these is an XML file. You simply save them out in the appropriate folder, and the files themselves are actually simple XML descriptors. So you can see here I've basically got coordinates for each controller, both FK and IK. So I can basically change this file, save it out as a new version, point it to a new image, and I'll have a new custom uh, setup. So we have the ability now to, of course, source multiple images for our backgrounds, as I showed you in the earlier example. So it's very simple and straightforward, but it gives you a lot of flexibility in terms of uh, visually controlling your, your different and unique characters. One of the more powerful new HIK workflows in my 2013 is the ability now to dynamically retarget animation from an HIK character to a custom rig. So what you'll see here with my Sven character is that I've got a custom rig driving the various body parts of my character. For instance, arm controllers, uh, hip controllers, head controllers, and so on. So these were all either built manually or they were built procedurally through some sort of a custom rigging script. But again, these are not HIK. These are custom. So now what I can do is using the standard character controls user interface, I can go in and I can map a relationship between an HIK definition and my custom skeleton. So what you'll see here is I've basically mapped the shoulders, I've mapped the elbows, I've mapped the hips, I've mapped the neck joint, I've mapped the leg and knee joints, and so on. So it's basically a similar mapping process for creating a standard HIK skeleton, um, or defining one rather. So all we've done here is we've just defined our character relative to uh, the skeleton. The next step is to actually define the rig controllers as well. So we have a new tab here called Custom Rig. You can actually create this through the main menu under uh, Custom Rig. And what this allows you to do is instead of mapping the joints, it allows you to map your controllers. So for instance, for the body, I've got my base controller here. For the head, I've got my head controller. I've got elbow uh, 
controls, I've got hand controls, and so on. And it's just a matter of basically selecting the controller that you want to apply, right-clicking, and just saying assign selected effector. So this is a fairly simple rig, but this could be applied in more complex examples as well. But for the sake of the demonstration, we're just going to keep it simple for now. So I've got not only a few controllers, but I've also got uh, controls or rather settings on those controllers that determine how they behave. For instance, the hand controller not only drives the arm IK, but it controls the FK of the wrist. So I've got the ability to map translation as well as rotation. And then I've got some offset controls, which I'll talk about in a bit. So in some cases, controllers are going to be FK. In some cases, they're going to be IK. For instance, the head, in this case, is only going to be an FK controller. Actually, I lied. Oh, that is an IK and FK. But anyway, you get the point. You can have uh, FK or IK for any given controller and independent uh, control over those. Now, once all this is set up, now the custom rig has been characterized. Now I can actually bring in another character into my scene. So I'm actually just going to bring in a simple character from my visor. So in the visor now, we've got several pre-rigged Human IK characters that you can work with to kind of ex explore and experiment with. We've also got mocap examples that have also been characterized. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this cartwheel example. I'm going to drag that into my scene. And what you'll see is I've got a simple kind of uh, dummy mesh and a skeleton that has some motion capture applied to it. Now these are pre-characterized, so this will actually show up in the character list for either source or target. So what I want to do is now apply my mocap example as the source to my target custom rig. Now as soon as I apply that, you can see now my custom rig will begin to follow that motion. So now I can actually go in and I can take, for instance, the master controller here and I can kind of pull that off to the side and I can begin to kind of compare these side by side. So these look pretty good actually. What it's doing is it's kind of comparing the joint rotations, the joint angles from the source character to the target and then it's kind of reverse engineering that to transfer that ultimately to the end effectors of the control objects. So the original retarget is happening on a joint to joint basis and the control objects are following the joints, but when I do the bake, it's actually going to do the bake onto the control objects. So a couple of things to point out here. Let's actually pull this off to the side. You'll see that as my character goes from kind of uh, the leg contacts on the ground to the hand contacts, the hands are actually solving based on standard FK. They're not actually solving based on IK. So what I can do is a couple of things. I can actually go to the control objects just needed to refresh that so it had a, had my new uh, character controls for Sven in here. So what I want to do is actually grab the hand controls and you can see that even though I have a custom control rig tab I still have the ability to go into my standard HIK controls and here I can control things like the bias between IK and FK. So right now, right now I'm turning on full IK as opposed to FK and here I'm turning on IK for the wrist as well. One thing you can see here is if my original character moves, my entire character is going to follow. So if that's true if I control any one of these joint angles. So if I rotate the knee here, you can see how that will indirectly, or I should say directly, drive the knee of my target character. But another thing I can do is I can actually go into the settings here, or rather the properties. I have the ability to solve in a number of ways. So here I can go in and I can adjust things like the legs and the collar, um, offsets as well as things like uh, floor contacts. So if I go to floor contacts under hands, I can turn these on and what that will do is it will actually use the ground to determine where those should hit, uh, where those should stop rather. So now if I go in and I grab this original object and I start to move it around, you can see that if I move it up, then I get no change in the rotation of the wrist. If I move it down, the wrist will contact the ground and then the arms will react. Now I have the same controls on the hands as well, or rather on the feet as well. And then ultimately I can take all this and I can bake it to my custom rig. So if I wanted to now um, take this a step further, I would actually come in here to my character controls. I would go under my bake settings and I would simply bake that to the custom rig. That will transfer all the animation from my original uh, mocap object and apply that directly to the rig. So now I can use animation layers uh, for instance, to go in and make further modifications. So for instance, 
as this character's moving here, I could go in and I could actually put this control object into an animation layer. Let's actually just create a new one there. And then I can go in and I can say, for instance, I wanted to pull this in a little bit and maybe rotate it this way, set a keyframe, and I've created an offset keyframe on top of my custom rig. So now I'm no longer doing a library target. I've done a bake animation, and then I've created an offset for that one particular control object so that I can do corrective animation on top of the uh, baked retarget so that I can refine it further. So along the way you have a number of uh, methods for essentially kind of refining and uh, controlling the way that retarget happens onto your custom rig.